insects plot how I love you so. You deserve a song so that I can show my love. Seriously, flex plot is worthy of a love song. So what is FlexPlot, you might ask? It is a package that I developed, and the whole purpose of it was basically to rewrite how we do analyses in R. And that rewrite was focused on making it easier to use visualizations, making it easier to estimate things, and minimizing the focus that we seem to have on p-values. And the guiding philosophy of FlexPlot is, by the way, very important, make sure you understand this. The guiding philosophy behind FlexPlot is number one, minimizing obstacles to creating graphics. And number two, that we create graphics that leverage human strengths while minimizing human biases. And you'll get a taste of that today as I show you some of the features of FlexPlot. So let's go to R, eh? Boy, that was fun. We're in R. Ha! So remember, uh, to load FlexPlot, you can hit require or type require, or you can type library. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. And also remember to access the documentation for FlexPlot, you just type question mark and then FlexPlot. And then on the right here, it shows you what the arguments are and the documentation is for FlexPlot. Now, all the graphics that I'm going to show you right now actually come from the documentation. So you could always look at the documentation. Pretty cool. And the critical feature of FlexPlot is a FlexPlot formula. That is how you specify how you want your visual to look. And the basic way that it is done is Y tilde A plus B, vertical pipe C plus D. And so each of these might represent a variable. And so what happens is the variable that you put first is going to be on the Y axis. The one that immediately follows the tilde is gonna be on the X axis. The next one after the plus sign is going to be represented as colors, lines, and symbols. Anything after the vertical pipe is paneled. So the first one is gonna be column panels. The second one is gonna be row panels. That's all very vague and stuff, so let's go ahead and look at an example. So here I'm going PTSD, tilde minutes, fighting, etc., And I'm going to fill up all the variables. I'm gonna fill up every slot in a flex plot formula with a variable. And so now we can see that PTSD, not surprisingly, is on the Y axis. Minutes fighting is on the X axis. And then the very next variable, north, south, like I said here, colors. Um, it is separated into colors, each of which has also a different line, either dash versus solid, as well as uh, symbols, triangles versus circles. And then, and then after the vertical pipe, we've got our two paneled variables, which is willpower, which is gonna be paneled in the columns, and then speed, which is paneled in the rows. So that's the basics of how you control the look of FlexPlot. But there are additional arguments, which we'll talk about in a minute, but first let me show you how to produce histograms and bar charts. So uh, it's a very simple formula with one minor modification from what we did before. Instead of saying tilde and then a variable name, you can just put the number one. And that is your wink to FlexPlot saying, hey, I want a histogram or hey, I want a bar chart. D is not found. Oh, why is D not found? Because I didn't make D. So I'm going to make D. D equals exercise underscore data. And now I don't have to change all my code later. So. Uh, yeah, income tilde one. So what FlexPlot is doing in the background, it's saying, wow, would you look at that? Income is a numeric variable. By golly, that means I need to do a histogram. And sure enough, look what it does. It does a histogram and a mighty fine histogram it is. Now, what happens when we try to visualize a categorical variable? So gender is a categorical variable here. And if I type that in, then it gives me a bar chart with females and males. And the y-axis now is count. So those would be the only deviations from what FlexPlot does by always putting that first variable on the y-axis, unless you have that one, unless you're looking at a histogram or a bar chart. So those are histograms and bar charts. Now let's look at some examples. We could do a scatter plot of weight loss on motivation and FlexPlot will default to this squiggly line, which we call a Lois line, which comes from the German word Los, which means something, something. It means something. I took German in high school, but I don't know what los means. If you know, then let us know. Um, anyway, Lois line is a line that is allowed to bend with the data. Uh, and so FlexPlot defaults to that just in case there are any bends. It wants to make sure you don't miss them. 
If you wanted a regression line instead, you can say method equals LM. Another argument you could add is SE equals false. So in this plot here, we've got a band surrounding that line and maybe you don't want that band. If you do, then you just say, hey, flex plot, SE equals false. And flex plot will say, I got gotcha. you. And then it will take away the standard error bar. Yeah, that's all. So if I run that, uh, then we get a very simple scatter plot with a line. Now we could also do B swarm plots. So that's what happens when you put a categorical variable on the X axis. Whoops, gotta run the whole thing, not just that line. And so we get cog behavioral and control and uh, by default, it shows median and the interquartile range. You could instead do spread argument equals S-T-E-R-R, -R, for example, for standard error. And that will show you mean and standard errors. Or you could go S-T-D-E-V and it will show you mean and standard deviations. So that's pretty fancy. Another thing that you can do just to show off some more of the functionality is you can say raw.data equals false. And it basically gets rid of the raw data. But notice comparing this plot to the last plot, notice the Y axis doesn't change. And here is one of the defaults that I have that SPSS does not have, have that SPSS does not have. And this is what makes SPSS horrible is when you plot plots like this, it will zoom in as close as it can. And it's like making a mountain out of a molehill because you are zoomed in so close and any trivial differences will be magnified. Um, whereas Flexplot will preserve the scale of the Y axis. Uh, another type of plot we can do is what you might consider like a chi-square plot that plots two categorical variables against one another. And so this is what we call an association plot, which the height of the bar represents the deviation from what you would expect by chance. And so what this is telling us is that there are more males in the control condition than we would expect by chance. And that's about 12% uh, more males than we would expect by chance. And then the cog we have, uh, let's see, we have about maybe 20% fewer males in the cognitive condition than we would expect by chance. Now, it just so happens that these were randomized, so these are minor fluctuations that you shouldn't worry about, but you get the idea. That's how you would do an association plot. There's also what you might call an interaction plot uh, that you would do for like an ANCOVA or something like that. And so there are actually two ways you could do it. One way, um, well, yeah, one way is to uh, take the categorical variable and show it as a different color slash line slash symbol. And here I'm just showing an example where I changed the transparency of it from, I don't know what the default is, but to 0.5, maybe you want to do 0.1 and make it you know barely visible. So you can, you may not even be able to, oh, you can on the, yeah, at least on my screen, you can see it. You can see these little dots that are mostly transparent. Um, another argument is sample. So I'm going to put this back up just so you can compare the two. So um, there's a lot of data points. It tends to get messy. So one thing you could do is you could sample the number of data points by using the sample argument and that will sample 50 from the entire sample um, and only display those. Um, and like I say here to make it less noisy or less uh, visually noisy. So that's one way you can do an, ANO, er, an ANCOVA plot or an interaction plot is by putting that second variable as a separate color slash line slash symbol. Another way you could do it is by separating it into panels. And so here we've got motivation on the X axis and then in separate panels, we've got the genders. And uh, that may be a little clearer to see. Um, we might wanna put uh, method equals LM. Look at the straight lines. So that's one thing you could do. Um, another situation you might be in is you might wanna look at the association between two numeric variables and a numeric outcome. And so there are a couple ways of doing that. So I'll just show you a couple here. So you can say, all right, specify income as a color. And what it's going to do is it's going to bin income. What does that mean? Well, that basically means it's going to take this continuous income distribution and then group them into basically low, medium, and high, although it shows you what the actual values are there. Because you have to do that in order to visualize a numeric variable. 
Um, now what you could do is you might say, hey, that's kind of messy looking at 87774.1. It would be nice if you could put your own custom labels on and you actually can. And so that's where this comes in. You say breaks and this tells you what values to break it at. So basically it's saying I want anyone with less than $95,000 and then between 95,000 and 100,000 and then between 100,000 and 105,000 and then of course above that. And then you could also specify a labels argument to tell R what uh, exactly to label those things. And so if I were to run that bit of code, we would see something that is far more um, clean to look at. So we got income bend, and then we got less than 95,000, which came from this argument, and that argument, that argument, etc. cetera. So uh, what about, put this on a separate line so you can see it all at once. What about when you have three numeric variables? Well, it starts to get complicated, but we can do it. So we can run that bit of code. And what that's going to do is it's going to uh, bend both income and health and then do separate panels for that. And then maybe when we want to relabel income, which is the same code as we had before. So anyway, there's lots of uh, functionality and I'm really scratching the surface of what Flexplot can do. If you are interested, I will leave a link in the description to the Flexplot official documentation, which basically outlines just about everything you can do with Flexplot. So with that, let's review these lovely learning objectives that we have. Number one, understand Flexplot's guiding philosophy. And again, one was to minimize obstacles to producing graphics. And then two is to produce graphs that leverage human strengths while minimizing human biases. Number two, understand a flex plot formula and what each slot in a flex plot formula does. Again, it's going to be Y tilde A plus B plus C plus D. A, uh, y will be on the Y axis. A will be on the X axis. B will be represented as colors, lines and symbols. C and D will be paneled. And then finally, number three, understand how to use Flexplot to create histograms, scatter plots, B swarm plots, and panel plots. So with that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.